Donna, thank you for joining me for the quarterly update for Ecuador. Um, I, we were I talking just, her. yeah, <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm stuck in Omaha, Nebraska with eight degrees above zero. It's a little better where you are, isn't it? Oh my goodness. I'm going to rub it in for you. Rub it in. It's like bright, sunny, sunshine, no rain, 70s out. I'm going to walk my dog after this. And yeah, yeah, yeah. My dog won't even go out. <laughs> <laughs> smart so, see they're smarter than we are they are smarter than we are <laughs> hey happy new year uh, we just got done with the holidays the 2022 has started uh what what were the holidays like where you are uh bring us up to date because i know that there are some pretty pretty interesting and specific things that ecuadorians do during their holidays and the expat community has their own traditions right huge here. I, I love the holidays here because they're not infiltrated with a lot of, oh, you got to buy a bunch of gifts for the kids and all that. It's really a religious holiday. And in the past, I mean, it's been before COVID, it's a mainstay. It's like where people come because it's great fun. Uh, it's some of the traditions that I love that I've done in the past, in fact, I just wrote about it, is that there's the Pasilla de Niña Parade, yeah, yeah. which you know attracts hundreds of thousands of people and all the different barrios dress their children up and angels and march down the street. And the parade is eight hours and uh, it goes on until mid-February because every child, they want to be able to have that experience. Sure. So, and they have the effigy burning, you know, which I love. You get to stuff down in your effigy all the bad mojo that happened last year and burn up all the stuff. <laughs> you, uh, you know, you eat the grape, the 12 grapes, you've got to eat them within a minute at the stroke uh -huh. of midnight. And um, so it's sort of like a fast food eating contest. And just the weird things like the red underwear or the yellow underwear that you wear to uh, you know, for love or prosperity. It's just a wild time. And there's little effigy burnings on every corner. So every corner, yeah, every corner. So this year, you know, it, it was like, okay, what are we going to do? How's it going to work out? And it was really, it was really quite restoring for me. They did have the Paseo de Nina. So mm -hmm. it wasn't as long and it wasn't, um, well, they said there wouldn't be dancers on the street, but it's Ecuador. There's always dancers <laughs> on the streets. So. You can't not have dancers on the street in Ecuador. Yeah, there were some dancers. There were some yeah. dancers. It, but I think the thing that was, uh, um, I kept the effigy tradition because I got to always burn up someone at the sure. end of the year that did me wrong <laughs> kind of thing. And uh, so I, I burned my effigy and I started noticing little fires happening in my neighborhood and them coming out and doing the effigies. And uh, at midnight, we had our, our incredible fireworks that just light up the town. And that was still in place this year. And so, you know, there's no, I used to fall asleep at nine o'clock every New Year's. And I joked that I didn't even know Ryan Seacrest had been hosting the New Year's celebration for 15 years. I usually just fall asleep on the couch and the only kiss I get at midnight is uh, the dog licking, you know, <laughs> Cheeto dust off my face or something. So to me, it was not the same as far as how many um, people were out on the streets. People here are very mindful of COVID and I'll, I'll get to that whenever it's appropriate. And yeah. um, so at midnight, you know, you don't sleep through the fireworks, that's for sure. I was just totally renewed by that. Cool. That Very this cool. town could keep its traditions even in the worst of moments, do it safely and bring it. It was like the Ecuador is coming back. It's just coming yeah. back. We're, Let's talk about that. Let, let's talk about the government's reaction to, to COVID, especially the last quarter of last year and going into 2022. What's new there on the ground? 
Well, I, when I say mindfulness of every everything, first I'll credit the Ecuadorian uh, government for being brave enough to put down mandates that really uh, protect us. We've mm -hmm. always done masks. We've always done um, the social distancing. It's very pro pro vaccine here, and everyone wears their mask. It's yeah. a kind, kind, kind culture. And I think the people here understand, they've been through measles that, you know, nearly wiped the, uh, the kids out. You know, they understand vaccines can have value. And right. so they're not reluctant to do uh, vaccines. So we're at like 77% of the people, you know, five and up have gotten two doses with the goal of being in February to be at 85%. And that's yeah. five and up, including kids. Yeah, yes. Yeah. And um, the other thing I think that they're doing, they're not they're not going to do a lockdown here anymore. They're really sort of heading towards herd immunity yeah. and, and getting there because everybody's doing, doing what they should do. At 75% so, plus, that's possible, yeah. Yeah, and so... Uh, I think it's 85% that they're shooting for by the end of February. Mm -hmm. So consequently, I just looked it up right before our, our call. In the past, for today, I mean, for January 1st, I picked that. Um, virtually, I think that like, it, it, it's like 50 deaths and in, uh, in, in under and under. All of Under it. 50 deaths in the country, yeah. It, it actually registers zero when mm -hmm. I looked. And um, so we're just making great progress here. And the other, um, the other thing about the lockdown, they are definitely implementing very strict codes. Like you have to show your vaccination card to get in any restaurant, any store, the big grocery stores like Super Maxi. And I think that combined effort of just getting everyone vaccinated and getting keeping it at this safe, uh, you know, mask and everything has benefited us because now we're almost at pre-pandemic levels. Yeah. Of what's normal for here? Yeah. Um, it's still cautious. It's still cautious. Um, the rule. Well, flying in from the United States to Ecuador and that in mid air, they changed the rule that you had to have a PCR test, not just your vaccination. So there were a bunch of us at the airport, they were all set up. They knew that we didn't know the rule. They uh, gave us PCR tests as soon as we landed and yeah. uh, you didn't leave the airport unless you were clean. So it's like all those different things the government has done has led us to the success we have now. Yeah. I will also say the other part of that is the actual people here. When I say they're kind, these are the most considerate people I've probably ever met in my life. And so um, I miss the, the kisses on the cheeks and the big hugs, but I'm really, um, I'm proud of the country. I'm proud of the country. So well, there's a there's a, there's a feeling of community there too. I mean, community means an awful lot to Ecuadorians, and they're Still proud to be Ecuadorian. They're proud, yeah, yeah. proud to mm -hmm. be members of their communities. Proud to be yeah. members of their indigenous groups if they are. The, mm -hmm. They're very community minded, so it doesn't surprise me at all that you're having good luck. Yeah, and, and you're right. Community. I think the older you get. <laughs> the more you appreciate community. And that's, um, there's a good expat community here. There's the, the Ecuadorians. Yeah, they're a role model for our community. You know, they, they still live in big family homes. Yeah. They're very attached to their families. We're, we're sustainable here because we grow most of our own food. And so we don't have some of those fears that other places have, like, is there any toilet paper left in the grocery store or whatever? So, you know, but I have to credit the Ecuadorian people. They tackle this like strategically. They, you know, got caught early in the epidemic of not doing, not knowing what they were doing to right. 
it will clamp down when you're midair. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you have to act, you have to act. And there was a time uh, back in the early days of the pandemic when Wyakill was hit very hard. The coastal areas very were hard. very hard. Didn't so, see it yeah. Right. Well, nobody saw it coming. And I credit the President Lasso for a lot of, he just was headstrong. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, we can't get well as a country unless we get well. Good, uh, good, good, good. You know, tackle this as, and they were strategic. You know, there's some bumps. There's not everything's open, you know, it's, uh, it's a, uh, you, the community is strong. So they like to party together. So there's. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Social distancing can be a challenge, but it makes your, it makes your uh, vaccination card pretty important. Yeah, make sure documentation. Yeah, so I have to carry it everywhere uh, now. Luckily, someone let me know after they went to a restaurant and couldn't get in. You know, bring your card. Bring but your card yeah, away. I think that's it's working here. So what am I to say? Good, yeah. good, good. Well, it changes day by day. We track it all the time. Uh, yeah. it, nobody knows what tomorrow is going to bring. But I wanted to ask you about another. Um, topic involving investor visa changes. We talked about that in the notes before this call. Tell me what's going on there. Well, I, this is, you know, first of all, the visa um, laws change here. They go up and down like the stock market. You never, they change as quickly as the stock market. You never right. know what's going to happen. But in the investment visa, they just recently, they, they, it's like executive orders on how they do some of these things. And uh, the investor um, um, visa, what's exciting about that is the, um, there are some people who come here that they may not strive to be a permanent resident. So let's say they're doing business or they have to go back and forth more like your temporary visit uh, right. visa that you have to have for two years before you even try for your permanent visa. You can only be out of the country 90 days each year, 180 days, two years. Um, how the investment visa is now working is that you have unlimited days you can come in and out of the country. You're not tied to any kind of time frame. Oh. So in the past, your v, uh, investor visa was uh, based on uh, like 70% uh, of what the minimum wage was for a year. Now they're doing 80. Mm -hmm. So where you could get investment visa for like 30 to 500 in the past, it's now like 10,000 more, 42,000. But with that, you get all the rights of the residency. Mm -hmm. You're flexible on your in and out time. So let's say you're someone who wants to um, not go for permanent residency or eventually citizenship. This wouldn't work, but if you're, but you can convert later. Yeah. Uh, but if you're, well, if, if you're someone who has maybe a sick parent or you have to go back to do work, this now allows you that freedom. That so, amount of time to be in the country was kind of a deal breaker for a lot of people because it was hard to count up for one thing. And two, if you had an emergency, there was nothing you could do about it. You could, you could put the kibosh on your entire effort if you stayed out of the country too long. So this is good exactly. news. Exactly. And um, I think what this will do is open another door for people who want to try out Ecuador or... Yeah. Now it does take an investment. The investment is around 42,000. It can be in a CD, but that's good news because the CDs at that amount pay about 8.5%. It's a good return. CD, <laughs> and for as long as you're trying to attempt to do your visa, but mm -hmm. let's say you want to leave, you can always, cash, if you want to stop that process, you can, and you leave permanently, you can cash out your CD. There is a penalty. Right. That it's uh, it's still at eight point five with the the penalty. You're still making profit, right? Right. So, or real estate. You know, if you want to invest in real estate, you know, you can put money there, and uh, then you know the appreciation of housing is. It's not like a roller coaster ride like it is in the United States. It's a steady rise. You know, not a fast 
but a little faster since uh, Ecuadorian uh, Cuenca, especially, has become a real tourist destination. Yeah. So. But for example, a fifty or sixty thousand dollar condo may be up in Cotacachi or. Oh, yeah. um, Seventy-five thousand dollar condo there in Cuenca would qualify. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So I, I think that's that's good news. Uh, I I always say for anyone interested in a visa, to really get a good understanding uh, that it changes all the time. It's a moving target. And doesn't necessarily mean you're grandfathered in either. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You might have to start all over again. I know a, a couple of people who have been caught in that bind, but bureaucracy is bureaucracy this in everywhere in the world, isn't it? Yeah. It, it all works the same. Yeah. So another alternative for everybody. Yeah. Donna, thank you so much for joining me today. It's been a pleasure talking to you. I'll catch up with you next quarter. Hopefully 2022 is going to be a cooler year than 2021 was. But there are, there are few nicer places to spend it than Ecuador. Always a pleasure talking to you. Always a pleasure. Thank you. Thank good you. Morning, you too. Ciao, ciao. Ciao, ciao.